We actually found a way to find the rendering. Uh, just a Google Autodesk rendering uh, and log in. It will lead you to this page and you just keep going to the bottom of that and it shows get started now. So that's why I said you know, Autodesk just had it. Uh, so just go get, get started now and it will open a new window. And this is how it looks like. And so this one listed the featured ga uh, gallery projects. You can also see others uh, projects. Just cannot believe all these uh, computer rendered pictures, not real pictures. And you can render uh, buildings. You can also render products, different designs. They look really good. Yeah, see that's all computer rendered. Uh, yeah, this one is also interesting. Yeah. You can you can tell that from the details, right? Anyway, um, okay. So I just received one image rendered successfully. So just go to my renderings. Log in again. All right. So this is my rendering, not as good as others. I, oh, that's the exposure level is too much. So I probably need to adjust it. Uh, but here you can basically adjust you know, uh, the image size and also um, the sky model. Yeah, I don't understand the meaning of that, but if this is something about the, the natural lights exposure uh, and also the location date, you know, if you render something in, uh, in the day and if you can basically change this one very, very easy. And uh, this is what? Yeah, so this is also you can render um, like some some videos like you are rotating this building and it can rotate this kind of rotation, you know, you can also different the frames that of course that requires, you know, different credits. Um, of course, you can render with virtuality like I mentioned, you know, that's probably, let me just see naive standard. Uh, we can also add something. Native, use standard, not final. Yeah, so that will be also render VR, and you can basically just uh, go by this. Uh, uh, it's just things like this. It's uh, paper based or plastic based, and just get a phone and insert it. Um, it's it's a very simple. Um, virtuality device and so if you design your first homework uh, the, uh, first project your dream house or whatever uh, the for graduate students that house you can you can definitely try something all right so for assignment one you design something with Revit you render images you render pictures and uh, uh, you can compile them as a single video or you can just uh, show them during your presentation remember on October the 1st, you guys are going to give a presentation. So you just basically show us the Revit model created. You know, if you have multiple levels, you just say for this particular level, um, you know, this is my design. And also you show some finished the rendered pictures and there's some uh, walkthrough videos that will be your um, assignment one. All right. So now let's talk about <coughs> Revit for architecture. Uh, so you can go to this home. Um, Week three lab tutorial Ruby structure and this is uh click here. That's actually the the tutorial. So we're going to do it, and we're going to use this uh, architecture model uh, because Revit integrated the architecture and the structure together, so we can use it. You probably already noticed that uh, in this uh, project browser, you have the structure plans already. Uh, but if you open that, it's only zero to one to level zero three roof level. We're missing uh two levels so first thing we want to add the two levels back so let's go to the view and go to this plan view here and go find the structure plan and then select zero to foundation all right so now we have this uh, zero to foundation structure plan and uh that, let's go back to the plan view structure plan and zero one lower level. So now I have all the four levels for my structure plan as well. Okay, so that's step one. And like I mentioned, a good practice is to add a grid line, right? So let's go to zero zero foundation. Let's add, a, add our grid line to the zero zero foundation. 
And then let's go to structure. Okay, so go to zero zero foundation structure plan, zero zero foundation, and go to structure. And under this data, you see this grid. Okay, so let's just add five grid line horizontally. So I'm just going to use my mouse, click one point, click another point. Now, do not worry about the dimension. We're going to use the equalize function later. But let's just add four grid line here. Uh, but make sure the fourth one goes through this one, okay? So I'm just going to do this. Now, Vidu, can you show again the, the foundation level, how to create on the structure? Just go to zero zero foundation. So you want to show, you don't know how to show this zero zero foundation under structure plan? Yeah. Go to view, um, plan view, and go structure plan. Yes. Yeah, and you will be able to see that here. I'm just select it and I'll click OK. Got it. Thanks. Okay. All right. So let's plot, keep plotting and the fifth lines here. All right. Okay. So we have this five grid lines in this way, but we want to equalize one through four. You guys remember how to do it? Just use uh, go to modify and go to this matter. All right. Aligned and do what? Select this line, select this line, select this line, select this line. All right. And uh, maybe find it, put it here and then click this equal. All right, we are good to go. So one, two, three, four, they are equally spaced and we have this five. So we have gray line here. We also need to create a gray line in this direction, right? So let me just uh, start from this wall. And this time we also want to create, let me, let me count how many, uh, six grid line this way. So let me just uh, start from here. Let me go back to structure, uh, data grid line, and I just go from here to here. All right, hold on here. Don't go further, but change it six to A. And enter. And then when you do the second, see, it becomes B. All right, so let me just go A, B, C, D. Once again, I do not to worry about the spacing now, but I want to make sure that the E goes through this wall. All right, so the E is here. And finally, I have my F going through this wall. All right, so now we want to equalize the spacing A through E. So once again, go to measure, align, and select A, B, C, D, E, and click anywhere, and double click, uh, just click it one time. All right, so now we have this uh, A through F and one through five. And if we want to uh, identify anywhere, say C2, so I know it is here. All right, I'm gonna stop here for a moment. Let me know if you have trouble creating the, the grid lines. All right, if no, we're going to create, uh, create a columns. Okay, let's say uh, this is a luxurious building. We want to build some uh, steel columns. <clears throat> or concrete columns as the foundation system. So let's go to structure. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how, how do I put it like equal all the grid lines? So you basically just uh, after you create a grid line, <clears throat> you just click this measure and you just basically select the lines. Okay. And then once you uh, select them, there is your small EQ and you just uh, click that EQ that will equalize the lines. Did you get it? No, I don't see like the EQ that you... Okay, that's so um, let me just... Uh... So let's say I have this wall, okay? And I have this... Uh... So let's say I have this three grid lines here, right? And just click this one. Once this is done, you put them somewhere. You see this EQ here? Did you see the EQ? And just click the one, one time.
Did you get it? Okay. All right. Hi, Professor. Sorry, how do you show the foundation level for structural plans? Okay, so it's actually under view, plan view, structure plan, select the zero zero foundation and click OK. Okay. All right. Okay, so now let's add structure column. So let's go structure and go column. And uh, let's go select this uh, W shape column, uh, 10 by 49. This is actually still column I beam or column. Okay. So let, let's say I select this one and I want to make sure where the steps goes to, you know, uh, let's use just a nine, nine feet. This is zero, zero foundation. So it's actually going deep into the soil. So one thing I can do is I can just basically uh, add it somewhere. Let's say I just add it here. Oh, there actually there's something already. So let me go to the 3D view. Okay, did you see the the column I just uh, the uh, column I just created? It's over there, right? Let me change it to a different view. Let me change it to wait, frame. You see the column I created over there? All right. So this is actually a manual way of doing that, but that's not what we want to do. Um, the reason we are creating this. Uh, Grid line is it can make the create of column much easier. So let's go to structure column and you'll see this uh, add a grade. Okay, let's select this one. And let's basically just move your mouse, hold, press and hold the, the left button of your mouse and just select everything like this. Boom, you have all the I beams uh, uh, columns at each intersection of you know the grid lines. Let's click finish. All right, so let's go to the 3D view. So all of a sudden you have all the repetitive uh, foundation components. Uh, let's go back. I probably do not need this one. So I just select this one, select this single one and just delete that. Now I have this uh, <clears throat> repetitive um, columns. All right, so you probably want to have a better uh, view. Which of column the... did you use? Sorry, what's that? Which column did you use? I just, uh, you can randomly pick something and I just use the uh, W shape, W10 by 49. Okay, so now let's create a cross-sectional view. Uh, it's also very uh, common that you're enjoying. So just go to view and then go to section, all right? And then you can basically just use your mouse and, uh, sorry, the wrong way. Just go to view and then go to section and just uh, select, let's say I want to cut it here and get a view from here. Okay, so now you see this dashed box, right? So this dashed box shows the view depths, you know, how much you want to see. So uh, that's probably too much to me. I just want to show this part. So once it's done, okay, I got it. So how to see that? So what two ways, you know, one way is once this is done, you will be able to see uh, underneath your project browser, you have a new item called sections. You can basically go there, double click, you will see that. Or you can just double click this item, uh, you know, Oh, it's, it's not working. Okay, it's different now. Anyway, so let's go to the section of view. So now this is actually the, the section of view, okay? And you can also change the, 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 the size of it. If you wanna just focus on, you know, the foundation and you can just, uh, you know, make it smaller. And uh, another way that to change the view is we can switch it between the thin line um, or the, the weighted lines, the thick line. So this one shows this. Uh, and uh, if you change the, the level of details, you know, you can basically see more details, right? Uh, you can also change it to realistic. Just imagine you have this uh, cross-sectional picture. Shade it. Oh, like this. Okay, so that's uh, how about uh, adding repetitive foundation and also how to create a cross section of view. Any question here? Okay, so this Can is actually the like the cross section of view. Sorry, what's that? Can you repeat like how to create the cross? Uh, such just under uh, on this uh, zero foundation structure plan zero foundation and then go to view 
and a section, and you can just basically just use a mouse like that. That will create that for you. Did you get it? And just put it like on the top? Yeah, just like this. Got it. Okay. All right. So now let's add the structural beams. We just add the columns, right? So let's add the structural beams. Let's go to structure uh, and go to beams. Uh, here. Wait, where's beams? Here. Yes. All right. So once again, let's just run the pick one. The first one, W12 by 26. And uh, again, you know, we can just simply plot the beam, you know, some somewhere. But once again, we do have a better method called on grades, right? So the columns are at grades for this beam's on grades. Similarly, we just select this one and hold your left button with mouse and just do this. All right, and click finish. So now you have all the beams. You probably cannot tell it from here, but let's take a 3D view of that. Let me change to my frame. You guys see all the beams I created? So actually now we have the columns have the beams. Can you repeat that again? Okay. Zero to foundation, select structure beam, and then go on grades and just select the entire area and then go finish. That's it. Did you get it? So that's all the columns, that's all the beams. You got it? Oh, I think so, yep. Okay, and if we go back to the section view we created, we should be able to see the beams as well. See, that's actually the beams we created, and that's actually the cross-sectional view of the beam, right? That's an I-beam, that's an I-column. All right. So we have the beams, have the columns, but sometimes we have the beam system, right? Um, the beam system is, is kind of like, you know, we have the beams, but the spacing here is too much. We also have the smaller beams here, uh, kind of like the bigger ones are gooders, and here the smaller ones. This is called the beam system. So we just go to structure again and go to beam system. Um, once, once again, you can just uh, sketch the beam system like this, or you can just automatically generate a beam system. So the automatically generate beam system, if you go to this place, you know, if you select this, this uh, beam, it knows that you want to create a parallel beams, like, like smaller parallel beams. If you select this beam, it also knows that you want to create, you know, this way. So let me select this one, that's a smaller beam. And you can change the spacing, you know, let's say, I think six is too, too big again. So let me just use three. No, actually that creates more uh, beams for you. All right, so let's take a 3D view of that. You see that's how the beam system we created. So that's the column, bigger beams and a smaller beam system. Uh, and also let's take a cross-sectional view of that. Okay, so maybe we can just create a different uh, cross-sectional view. Something's wrong with the, okay, oh yeah. I was in the middle of something, so I basically want to quit that. So let's say uh, I want to create a new uh, cross-sectional view to show some details and how the beams are connected. So I just go cross-sectional view and uh, I do not need to go over everything. I just want to maybe show this part. Okay, and that looks pretty good. I can also make it smaller, like to focus just on these two beams and this, this area. So it looks good. And then I go to this uh, cross-sectional view. Um, maybe just go 
square frame and uh, fine. And maybe I do not need that much. I can just go smaller like this. And not good. Square frame. Okay, now you can see uh, the details and how the beams are connected to each other. All right, so now we know um, how to create the, the beams. Uh, and we can also consider uh, add this uh, uh, foundation cap. So let me go to 3D. So we want to add a cap to the, to the, uh, bot at the bottom of the columns. That's also doable. Let's go to foundation again. Zero zero foundation again, and then go to structure, uh, go to slab, uh, isolated. Uh, it shows that nothing's loaded now uh, yet. So let's just go yes, and uh, let's load something here. So let's just go up. It should be something called uh, structural, structural foundations. Uh, and we have different caps, that's caps, but and here the pale cap okay let's use this let's use this one all right so the pale cap rectangular just load it and once it's loaded we can once again we can place them you know uh separately or we can use the other grids again but this is too big so let, before i do that i really want to change the size of it. it's too big so i want to duplicate don't forget to duplicate it okay and I just want to say 36 by 36 by 12. So that's that's the name of that. But of course, I also want to change that to 36 inch. 36. That's 12. Oh, that's one feet, one foot. All right. So now I have this new one. Once again, I can use this uh, at a grade. And select everything. And finish. It's fine. All right. So now we have the foundation caps. Okay. So I'm going to stop here for a moment. Let me know if you have a question. I can also go to the section view. Yeah. Any question? So far so good, right? All right, so now let's talk about some reinforcement. Okay, so that's the rebars inside the, the column. Um, but before that, I do have some quick question for you guys. So let's assume this is a concrete, uh, this is a concrete beam and how the rebar should be deployed inside. Can anybody tell me? Should we put the rebar, what directions and where should we put the rebar? Anybody? I guess horizontally. Horizontally? Uh, okay, and where we should put the horizontal? Actually, we need both, right? So, but uh, yeah. for the horizontal rebar, where should we put it? And once you select the beam or the column, then only it can be determined like how the reinforcement would go. Yes, we need to de de determine them manually, um, but like we still need, yes, but we still need to know like, for example, for the horizontal rebar, should we put them? Uh, the upper side? Sorry, what's that? On the upper side of the beam? The upper side. Or horizontally on the upper side of the beam. So upper side and middle or lower side? You said upper side. Okay, okay. anybody vote for middle? Anybody vote for lower side? It should be in both sides, but it should be more in the, in the bottom side. Yes, why? Can you tell me why? Because in the bottom side, there's a tension and the upper side is compression. Exactly. Concrete is really good at compression. You know, basically the concrete beam will become this kind of a U shape. 
And so uh, at the top, that's the compression. And the concrete is really good at the compression. We do not need that much re reinforcement for that side. But the concrete it cannot sustain uh, uh, tension, uh, you know, cannot sustain a lot of tension. So that's why you see all the uh, damage, like cracks going at the bottom. So we, that's where you need a rebar to support that, right? Do we need a vertical reinforcement? Anybody? Ever? Anybody? Do we need a vertical in, uh, reinforcement? We need, we need, I think, just stirrups. Just what? Stirrups. Yes, yeah, stirrups. And what's that for? That's for? For, for the shear. Yeah. For the shear force. For the shear force, exactly. The shear force basically, you know, like uh, you have the one force going this way, one force going that way. So your concrete will tend to, you know, have some damage in this way. So the stirrups is kind of like the cage going this way, right? So now we understand the basics. Let's add that, that reinforcement. Uh, okay, so that's actually the, let me see, that's the item four in the second tutorial, add a reinforcement to a bin. So first of all, we need to change some of the, <clears throat> Uh, the the beam into uh, concrete because we use the steel beam, but we want to add a reinforcement to them. So let's change them to concrete. Let's just select uh, this one, this one. We can use the control button to select, select both of them. And then let's just use Sorry. this short. So what's that? Yeah, I have a question because my my design, there's a, there are like the, the name of the beams are in the design. Do you know how do I like, been out or sorry what's your question again so is that in my design like in my, in my design they appear like the name of the beams in the design the design yeah I, if you want i can show you like my design. yes yeah sure hold on a second let me stop sharing and open the sharing yeah go ahead So uh, I mean this. But oh, the tags. Yeah, the tags. You okay? It shows all the tags of the beam. Yeah, it, it's fine. Like... But but looks like your beam are not on the red place. Let me see structural plan foundation. It should be. Um, I'm not sure where you place them on the right. So structural plan series of foundation. If you select one of the beams, can you select one of the beams? What do you mean? Yeah, just just uh, use your mouse to select one of the beams you created. Are then all? No, no, just select one of them. I want to see if you place them on the zero zero okay, foundation. Oh uh, yeah, you just play. Sorry, you placed the wrong thing. You you didn't place the beam. You placed the tag. So I don't have the beam. Uh, can you show me the three D view? Can I flip it a little bit? No, I don't think you have the beam. Uh, you have the beam system, but no, you don't have the beam. I think when you place the, oh, was that a small one? Can you change it to well-frame, well uh, the view? That box, uh, change it from realistic to well-frame. Go to the bottom. Yes, to well-frame. Yes, you do have beams. It's just uh, uh, when you create that, also you created the, the text. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine, but you have beams. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, so now let's say we want to change these two beams into concrete beams. So I'm just going to select this one and use the control button to select this one. And, uh, but we don't have other beams, so let me just go insert load the family and go to uh, structural, which one should I, structural, structural framing, concrete. Yes, let's go to structural framing, concrete, and go concrete rectangular beam, RFA, and select this one. All right, so let me select these two things 
and use the draw box and uh, change it to let's change it to 12 by 24 concrete all right so now we have this uh, uh concrete um, beam um so maybe i can create a cross-section of view to make it more clear so i'm just going to create a cross-section of view here and i think this this would be enough for me Okay, and uh, so I can, of course, I can rename this uh, cross section view. Okay, uh, so let me just call this. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to open that, and I do not need that many, that much. So I'm just going to make it smaller, like this. Okay, so now I can see the detail of this uh, cross section view of this. Uh, Concrete beam. All right. So the scale is uh, is also uh, not clear. Uh, so next step is I want to uh, change the scale. Is the scale is not we're not changing the real scale of the drawing, but we're just changing. Can you guys still hear me? I can. Yeah. Okay, I'm keeping receiving. I don't know if you see my screen. Uh, Zoom quit unexpectedly. There was some little interruption, but sorry. Okay, uh, can you guys hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Okay, the beam just, uh, uh, my Zoom just uh, forced me quit. Share. Okay, I think it's working now. Okay, so let's change the, the scale. This is the view scale. So if you go to the bottom, so the, this bottom pretty much manage how the view looks like in your current design window. So just click this one and change it to uh, three quarter inch to uh, one. So let's see if I find this a uh, three quarter inch equals one. Let's change it to here. Now we can see more details of this concrete, right? So this is, um, let me go to five. That's basically all the aggregates, you know, uh, the crushed stones inside the concrete. So we have this one. All right, so next step, before we place the rebars, we also want to define the cover. So can anybody tell me what the cover means for concrete reinforcement? Anybody? It just to protect the steel bars from corrosion. Exactly, correctly. So the, basically there's a distance between the, uh, the edge of the concrete to the rebar. Uh, and that is actually f uh, to protect the rebar from corrosion. Uh, rebar is steel and they, 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 don't, they don't like water. So that's why we need a distance from the boundary to uh, the rebar, that's called a uh, cover. So we need to define cover first. So let's go to structure and you see that says I have a cover. So let's go there. And uh, now if you, if you put a mouse here, you, you see this uh, green dashed line. That's actually the default cover. And you probably want to ask, uh, can I change the cover? Yes. You can just go here, the three dots, and you just say um, rebar cover one. You can duplicate it. And then let's rename this one as rebar cover for foundation beams, all right? And let's change this to uh, two. Two is probably too much, but anyway. Okay, so now we I can just uh, put it here. So now I have this uh, cover defined. Okay, so now let's uh, add the rebar. So we have the cover defined, let's add a rebar. So let's go to uh, uh, structure and go to rebar. And tells you, save the project. It tells you nothing. Uh, so we should load things first. All right. So let's go find all the rebar. It should be um, US Impro structural rebar ships. So let me find it. US Impro and let's find the structural rebar ships. Okay. So that's it. 
not the couplers, not the walls, but the rebar shapes. And let's load everything. Just control A and open. Give it a second. Okay, all right. Now we have all the rebar loaded. Okay, so let me uh, go to structure and rebar. And uh, so here you basically have different rebar shapes, but I don't know what they are. So now there's a three dots next to it. Just uh, click that. Now I basically can see the shapes of all the rebar. Okay. And you can select uh, whatever you need based on the shapes. So for this is the cross-sectional view of a concrete beam. Can anybody tell me which rebar should we use? Let me just uh, go scan them quickly. T1? Yes, T1 is a perfect one. That's actually stir up, right? So we're actually uh, designing the stir up, right? So just basically do this and you can, you can move your mouse here. You can basically, def just by moving your mouse, you can define which, which you want to, it to tear up. So let's just uh, place, and you see this is why the cover play a role. You know, we define the cover already so the rebar wouldn't go out of that range. So uh, let's just do this and click OK. All right, so we have this rebar defined, all right? Um, but this is only one of it, okay? So we want it to be, so let me show you a 3D view of that and let's see if it's correct. Let me see. That is the one that we just defined. And let me change it to wellframe. I don't know if you can see, it's here. It's only one strap. We want it to be repetitive, right? So how do we do it? We, we need to change it. So let's go back to this uh, cross section of you, cross beam um, and select this rebar. So once you select this one, it has something called the layout. The layout will show up. It's, we, uh, now it's single, we don't want it single. We want it to be um, repetitive. So let me see how, what I said in the, in the tutorial, single. kind of forgot what the parameter I used in the tutorial, but let's just randomly pick something. So let's say um, maximum spacing, all right? And uh, four inch, and so that tells me that means uh, I will have 33 such thing. Okay, so that is done. Let me go back to the 3D view. You see that's basically the rebar. But this is so busy, I don't want to see other stuff. I want to focus on my concrete, so what I do? So this is, uh, you select this con uh, concrete beam. This is the concrete beam selected. So once this is selected, you go to, um, where is that? View. Okay, hold on, let me see, modify here. So once you select this concrete beam, let me do this. So you select this concrete uh, beam, once it's selected, um, there's a, under the view, there's a little uh, box or the, the keyboard, uh, shortcut is BX, but it just like this one. And then all other things will be gone. You can focus on just, you know, the design of your uh, current concrete beam. Uh, let me also change the change it to thin line so it's easier for us. Now you see that's basically I define the spacing of my stirrups um, and I have it here already. Okay, so I have this part down. Okay, so now we need to define the horizontal bars, right? The one that will go uh, busier at the bottom. So let's go, um, we can use this view to do it. Okay, this is how it looks like. Oh, I can create another section of view. Let's, let me create another section of view. So this is the zero zero foundation. Oh, it says flow plan, sorry, structure plan. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, I, just, uh, I just created a cross section of view looking this way so I can create, I can design my stirrups. But now if I want to uh, design my uh, horizontal reinforcement, should I create, which way should I create a cross section of view? Maybe this way, right? So let me just go here 
and just create one like this. I do not need that much and I can move it here, maybe a little bit more like this. All right, so let's say, let's rename this as um, details. Horizontal. Just spell that. All right. Let me go there. Once again, I don't need. I do not need that much. So I just. All right. And also, I can change this to detail and uh, thing like. All right, so now I want to create this uh, uh, the rebar in this direction. So once again, I go to um, structure, uh, rebar, and uh, can anybody tell me what the shape of the rebar should look like? In seventeen, yeah, like a three, right? So this oh, one, okay. sure, right? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So let's select this one. Hold on, something's wrong. I cannot place it. Rebar. And uh, oh, parallel to cover. Okay, so this is actually showing the parallel to work plan. We need to change this to. Okay, no. Let me see. Parallel to cover. Should be this one. Hmm. Let me think. What's going on here? Oh, I see what's going on. Sorry, guys. Okay, we see the the beam, but we are still there's a still distance between our current view and the beam, right? So let me go back and let me let me explain what's going on here. We create a cross section of view here. So what actually we are standing here seeing this beam. We are not in the middle of the beam, so there's no way for us to place the rebar here. Make sense, guys? So what should I do? Can anybody tell me? I should move this one. Make sense? I should move you to cut in the middle of the beam. So now this cross section of view is actually showing what's inside of this beam. Make sense? So now let's go back to structure and go to rebar. And go select this one. So see, I can now place. Um, like we now we just use this uh, parallel to the work plan. This is our work plan. Should I place this way or this way? A or B? Anybody? Should I play A or B? B. B, right? That's what we said, right? So we just uh, put it here. Um, and then we can basically uh, define the, the dimension here. But there's actually more accurate way, like what you see here uh, in this window. You, you know, if you have the original design, you can basically just tap in the right, right dimension here to make it more accurate. But now I'm just going to use my mouse. We, we get the sense, right? So I'm just going to uh, move it like this. This one can be go uh, higher, like this. That makes sense. All right. So now let me show you the 3D view of that. If I go back to the 3D, not this one. You guys can uh, 
can see what's going on right here, right? So we have the strap, so we have this rebar. Um, this is the this is the concrete. I can hide the element, only show the rebar. Also, I can hide this element, only show the rebar. Okay, so now I can see a clear view of the rebar design. And of course, you can just do the real choice to, to render that and see how the rendered view look like. Oh, the rebars are gone. Okay, anyway, so this is a uh, uh, how the, the beam rebar look like. Let me see if that is all. Yes. Okay. So, um, of course, you can also add other bars. For example, at the top, we should also have our rental bars. What that, what that is called? We actually were missing uh, some important rebar, sorry. For the stir ups, we also need uh, you know, two rebars at the top for two rebars at, at, at the bottom. So it looks like a cage, right? So let me go back to the, um, let me think. Okay, guys, so can, can any of you tell me if I want to create a horizontal bar at the, at the top and also at the bottom, should I go to this, uh, this, this cross section of view or this cross section of view? Should I create that here or should I create that here? Anybody? Actually, it's easier to create that horizontal bars here. You know, you see this, this bar, the position is probably not correct. So we can basically just uh, move it manually here, right? Uh, like this, um, but of course, uh, like I said, you know, there's a much uh, more precise way to do it. Or I can just, uh, um, you know, use my control button, create a copy of that, right? But we also need a bar here, bar here, and a bar here, and a bar here. Okay, so let's go to structure and go to, once again, rebar. And this time we just need this simple bar, right? This uh, rebar shape zero. And, uh, but it's going this way. Okay, so if I want to go to uh, the other direction perpendicular to my screen, I just go parallel to cover. And now I see it becomes a dot. I know what I mean, right? So basically just go one here, one here. And once again, you can basically define, you see the numbers are changing. You can define them in a much precise way, but I'm just going to do something like this. All right, so now if I go to the 3D view, You see, that's actually the complete uh, reinforcement for concrete column, how it looks like. All right, you probably say, oh, where's my other stuff? Why I'm only having this one left? Okay, so first of all, I want to reset our temporary view, and then I want to go to my uh, modify and click that, uh, okay, let me select this one. I want to click that little, where's that? Yeah, click this one. Hold on. Oh, sorry. So let me go to the 3D view and uh, underneath the 3D view, there should be a box called a section box. It's checked. So let me uncheck it. Now everything will be back. But uh, we have all the reinforcement defined for that uh, concrete beam. Okay, guys, let's take another 10 minute break. Uh, so we are done with the concrete beam. Let's return at the 640. Meanwhile, if you have a question, let me know. I'm here. If no question, I'm going to just stop sharing my screen and uh, pause the video recording. 